Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. Some of my Christmas lights are not working. It's a bit unusual this because normally like you might find some LEDs don't work. These are normally wired effectively with maybe eight lights per sequence and a chain. There's no doubt two chains on here because it has these various effects. Yeah. But this doesn't do anything even with it plugged into the mains so this doesn't actually have a power pack which they often do have the mains plug goes directly into the controller and that's a bit unusual I wonder if this is like 220 volts because normally these things run on 24 volts or similar yeah uh, there's three wires going down here and the three wires look like they go all the way down whereas normally you would have like five wires so you have like a return wire one for each channel there's two channels and then effectively one that takes you down eight leds the next section if you like 24 volts i bet it runs on 220 volts and that in itself is a bit strange so let's see if we can actually fix it i'm interested straight away to know what's actually inside this can i get inside it that's a good question as well uh, well, this is usually like a little cover here you normally find. I've unplugged it from the mains power. Yeah, so that comes off. And we have power coming directly into here. Do you think this has a little switch mode power supply on it? Or do you think it just effectively is using the 220 volt? Well, I think there's the answer. <laughs> there's the answer. There's no isolation on this there's just a little uh, controller chip here we have a bridge rectifier a little capacitor and that's it to I'm pretty sure we'll find these are triacs and really that is it so this little power supply the bridge rectifier and the capacitor this will power the little controller chip and the little controller chip we can have a look yeah there's two connections going to the gate i would say of the thyristor which i'm sure what they are we have mains power coming directly in to the thyristors one two of them and then we have output from each one and i'm pretty sure this will be the other side of the mains that's a, a fun thing, isn't it? A little bit strange. Slightly dangerous, maybe, if your pet cat likes to chew on the wires. But <laughs> that's how they made it. So, why isn't it working? There's not much to go wrong here, is there? I mean, the only thing that can go badly wrong is this, I guess, the little controller. There's two resistors, quite a high value, one meg. And another one looks like the markings come off it slightly. Let's zoom down a little bit. Well, with a little bit of zooming, we can see this little bit of horror, really, I think, this thing. I mean, there's obviously no isolation from the mains, so that means that all these are at mains voltage. And considering this is like thin wire, I'm a bit surprised really i mean isn't it true that like mains voltage wire is supposed to be like effectively two layers of insulation on it if you know what i mean mm. so these i'm sure are going to be triax or thyristors we have clearly a bridge rectifier here for diodes so we have a look we can see we have one end of the mains comes in one end of the mains one side let's call it neutral goes to this diode and this diode and then live 
goes to to other diodes. So that's the input to AC connections to the bridge rectifier. It also goes from here via this two meg resistor, red, black, green, to a pin on this controller unit, which is kind of like encapsulated on there. So that's what that is. So that's obviously got an AC signal on it. Then, output from the bridge rectifier is obviously those two and these two. These two are the negative end of the diodes. And they should go to the negative end of the capacitor. Yeah, here. And then the other output from the bridge rectifier well, it doesn't go to the positive end of the capacitor. The other output goes to something there. That's the other resistor. And it goes straight out to the LEDs. And then these two ends, this is like the positive end of the LEDs, the negative end of the LEDs. So this is running effectively on DC or pulse DC. These will be thyristors. They come into the two thyristors here and here. And I'm guessing this goes to the positive end of the capacitor, maybe? That one. No, negative end of the capacitor. So where's the positive end of this capacitor connected then? Oh! So we have another resistor. Brown, green, and then you can't read this. I wonder if that's damaged. And that feeds in to the other end of the capacitor. This will have DC and then that will supply power to the controller. Yeah. And then we have uh, the switch. Okay. And this will connect from this track. That's the uh, negative end of the bridge rectifier. Connects to this pin on the controller. Okay. Yeah, we have two output pins. And we have one more. Oh, we had looked at that one end of the resistor. And that's the return from the thyristors, I think. So there's not a lot can go wrong with this, really. I mean, nothing's obviously gone bang. I do suspect this resistor might be a problem. Let's see. So this is a 2 meg resistor. It actually reads 1.56 meg in circuit. So if it reads lower than its rated value, it is probably okay. And this is another one. And this reads 150k. Well, that's fair enough because 1.5 and then some zeros. 150k, that would be yellow. I probably just can't see it. So those resistors look okay. What about these two little thyristors I'm thinking they are 38k 1.2 megs I can't really tell very much about looking at these for some reason that must be triggering effectively yeah in fact when my meter does that it's normally because it's on uh, auto range Rather than manual range. Let's just try a few ranges. Kilo ohms, kilo ohms, mega ohms. And it reads now. Yeah, it reads quite low. 8.1k. What about this one? Well, they both read the same. So that is probably okay, you would think. Yeah. So why isn't this thing working? The bridge rectifier diode's gone or something stupid. But, I mean, bear in mind, there's no fuse in this. There's no fuse in the plug. It's in the EU plug. There's no fuse inside here. So, you would assume that if a diode had gone short, it would blow up. Yeah. It would blow up. It's a case of, like, what goes open circuit first. There's no fuse in this. Well, that reads OK. That reads OK. That reads OK. And that reads OK. What a nasty little thing it is. I'll power it up. I'm going to put my current limiter in series with this because I have no other 
nothing else to limit the current in any way whatsoever. Yeah, this has got to be dangerous, surely. Let's put the current limiter in. Right. And then we'll power it up and we'll have a look to see what we've got. Power's plugged in, yeah. Switch it on. Well, nothing happened. I didn't expect anything to happen, really. Let's see if we've got any supply coming out of our bridge rectifier. So the supply goes to the capacitor via a resistor. What have we got? Well, there's 4.3 volts in there. Not a lot, is there? 4.3 volts. Let's have a look at the AC voltage coming out of this. So that will be, if I just switch it off a moment, turn it over. Okay, it's switched off now. Okay, stay flat. Doesn't want to stay flat. Better persuasion it stayed flat. Let's have a look. So we'll switch it back on. This is your AC coming in. This should be your mains. Stay down. Ah, oh, I can see a broken wire here or something. 231 volts coming in. I've switched it off again. What's this? What is that? Like a bit of copper. That's not like just been pushed out by when you effectively put the lid on, has it? Let's have a look. Switched off again. <coughs> just to be safe, it's unplugged. Do we have continuity from here to the bridge rectifier? Yeah, we do. So that's <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> it's not causing a problem, yeah. So we can measure the AC coming in. Well, we know it's going to get here anyway. Between here and here. Yeah, but we know we have 220 volts, so. Yeah, she's getting to there. So we definitely have AC coming into it. It was looking like something wrong with these or this. Let's just check the output from the bridge rectifier then. So one end of it is here and the other end is here. What do we have? I believe I have it switched on. Two hundred and seven volts. Oh yeah, that would be lower than I would expect because there's no smoothing capacitor, it just pulsed DC. That's why I'm not seeing like three hundred and twenty or something like that. So that's okay. Um You know, I think I know what's wrong with this actually. Where's the negative end of the capacitor? This is the negative end of the capacitor, okay? So look on the gates to these triacs. This is one of them. Do we see anything like happening? No, I thought I might be able to see it kind of like switching on and off. But actually that slight ch little changing around, that probably is the gate switching on and off. The actual gate voltage on the track does not vary very much at all. So I think they're actually working. What's on here? There you see it. I think these are switching. Yeah. I'll tell you what's wrong with this. You probably figured it already. All the LEDs are in a chain, yeah. Like one chain per the two channels. And if one LED goes out in the chain, the whole chain will go off. As opposed to like normally with the low voltage ones, just one little section goes out. And that's what's wrong with these. I think I can actually confirm that, although I really have already. You can see that it was trying to switch them by putting my backlight tester on here. 
Here is my backlight tester. This has two ranges. It has one milliamp, which effectively is like 21 volt output. And it has a 30 milliamp, which is now giving a nice 326 volts output. This will give you quite a zap if you touch the two probes with your fingers, by the way. I suggest you don't do that. If you short them together, it'll just go to zero. It only sends 30 milliamps, but I'll tell you, 30 milliamps, you can feel it, yeah? So I suggest you don't touch the ends of the probes with your fingers, not both of them. Touching one isn't a problem, it's touching the other one at the same time is where the problem starts. So we can connect onto here, we can connect onto here. And you'll see that nothing happens to the display, that's what it's shorted, that's what it's to there. So nothing's happening. So this chain of LEDs is open circuit. And this chain of LEDs is open circuit. Uh, and in this case it really isn't worth repairing this one. I could go down the chain and try to figure out which one is causing the problem. I suppose actually it might not be too difficult to do that. And then just change the LED. I mean we could put this back onto one milliamp, yeah. It's a bit safer now. Switch it back on. And then, if I take a crocodile clip and attach the positive probe to the positive wire on here, okay, this is set now to one milliamp, and if I connect after an LED it should light up so here's the first LED if I just come in here and stick my probe into the wire well if that LED was a good one you would expect it to light up I'd be very surprised if I actually found the 41 already maybe I did but the problem with doing this way normally speaking on a low voltage one it's really not a problem poking little holes in the wires to get a connection to them but on a mains voltage one you know i really don't feel inclined to do that either so there you go guys i'm not going to repair these i suppose in reality i'm probably being very unfair to them these are no more dangerous than the Christmas lights we had in the 70s and 80s really before we had LED ones that mostly were just a chain of you know uh, 1.2 volt bulbs and there'd be like 200 of them in a chain and we'd go around and we'd poke bulbs in the bulb holders until it worked and we didn't really worry about that so I don't suppose really why we should worry about it now actually so maybe I'm wrong in saying this is dangerous it's no more dangerous than the ones with the little incandescent lights in them really yeah interesting to see what you guys think in the comments below but in the meantime you know this time i'll just buy some more christmas lights having said that though i think i'll keep the thyristors <laughs> they could be useful yeah okay guys see you all soon on another learning electronics repair video ciao for now